Welcome back. Our next guest has gone from foster homes to Harvard Law, and she is a best-selling, award-winning author. She's the CEO of a media company, the associate producer of the Emmy-acknowledged Project Forgive. She's a keynote speaker, a globally published journalist, a leader in business, and globally acknowledged child advocate. And I couldn't be more proud to say she is a dear longtime friend. And frankly, I'm grateful for this opportunity to bring her to Good Day because it gives us an opportunity to visit. El Febo, thank you for being on the show. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. I have loved you for a, a, more than a decade and you know that I honor you and I cherish you. And I'm so excited to see you doing something just like this. This is this is awesome. It is awesome. And the reason it's awesome is because I get to invite people like you to share with other awesome people, because the whole mission of Good Day Orange County is to shine a spotlight on amazing people doing amazing things. And you, my darling, super qualify. Thank so you. I want to talk about love. And so where would I go if not directly to you, the woman who wrote the book, What Love Is A to Z? And as we were just discussing before I turned on the recording, you know, while your books are written for children, I am not convinced that they are the greatest recipients of the learning. I really believe that the grownups among us receive the messages very deeply as a reminder, because sometimes we need to be reminded about love, how to love, how to teach love and where love shows up in our lives. So take us down that journey for you. How did your books come to be? Where does love fit besides everywhere in your life? I'd be lost without it. Uh, I, um, I owe my life to it. And, and the love that's moved through other people for me, to me, the messages that come from other people through song, through message, through reading, it's literally everywhere. And when I think of love, I think of God. So, um, you know, without, without getting too deeply into it, God is what love is. So the book is written for everyone, but really there's, there's, I know for me, God is what love is. And I think you're right. There is, um, there is a message here that I think we tend to lose. I think children know the book. They know the book. They know it by heart. They're, they're, um, they have this intuition. It hasn't been beaten out of them or chastised out of them or lost on them or labeled over or anything else. Um, they get it. It's the, it's the grownups when we need to just simplify, simplify and remember what's really important and what love looks like. I know in my adult life, I've been in relationships that I thought were love, but that's not what love looks like. If you talk to a child, they will tell you what love looks like, feels like. They'll know it when they see it. Um, so it's really just through a child's eyes. And you know, I didn't write that book. I That book moved through me like a divine inspirational message. And all I did was take notes. Um, I really don't, I, I co-wrote it with God. Starting to want to write a book was, I was very, I was very small. I was maybe seven or eight or so when I started to write and draw pictures and things like that. But when I went into, and I, you mentioned my foster homes, I did go into Orangewood Children's Home. I grew up in Laguna Beach. It was picturesque and looked really great, but I fell into the system and lived in Orangewood Children's Home. Um, and I used to go from my girls unit, my junior girls unit over to the units with the smaller children, toddlers, preschoolers, and um, we used to help tuck them in at nighttime and get them into their jammies and and uh, always read them a story. And um, we had the same books to choose from over and over and over. And I used to say, I'm going to write a book. I'm going to do it. There needs to be something better, something 
something good. And we would make it good because us kids knew to change the words and make it funny and create a new story. Um, and I figured if someone else could write a book, I, I probably could. So I did. So you, don't, did. You, wrote you don't know what's in, you don't know when you're, when you're small, that there's really anything, you don't see the obstacles. You just say, I'm going to do this. Yeah. And then it does take an adult to help you move it through where it needs to go. And you've become that adult for so many people. I mean, you are in the publishing world. You are in the business of helping people get their messages on the page and out into the world, which, you know, we can always trace back that thread, that initial seed and the thread that followed us through. I mean, I in my image world, you in your publishing world, you and your child advocacy, it, it's all from seeds that were planted early, early on. And I would say that the opportunity to follow those messages is really the simple execution of love as we know it, right? Is listen and then move through. So tell mm -hmm. us, tell us about the books and, and how you've used them, because I think that's so special. Listen and move through. That's that's a big part of it, Lauren. It's listening um, and then taking action because nothing happens without the action. We all, I, I know so many people who have amazing and brilliant and courageous and generous ideas, but who sit with those ideas. Nothing's going to happen with those ideas. We're not going to change anything with an idea, but we will change a whole lot and create a ripple effect when we take action. So when the book was born and it was done being moving through me and written, um, I drew some pictures of what I thought each pic what of a picture that I thought would represent whatever the line was so that anyone could read it, whether you could read or not. We have a lot of grown people today who cannot read. Just because you're an adult doesn't mean that you can read, but you can read this book because the pictures are a direct reflection of the affirmation that's in the line. Um, so I, I did these pictures and quickly realized I should probably not uh, um, illustrate my own book. So I hired a brilliant illustrator to, to create these same images in my head in watercolor. Um, and then we took the book to market and I, you know, I knew I wanted to get it into the hands of every child, whether they could afford it or not. I didn't know how, how to do that. I didn't know what that looked like. How do you give away thousands and thousands and thousands of books? But, um, and people would say, that's a really big, it's a really big goal, you know? Yeah, I know. I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I, I really want to do this. Okay. Um, and I figured it out. I, I, um, I thought, who's important to me? A lot of these children's charities, uh, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, and um, uh, Royal Family Kids Camps, they supported me when I was in foster care. So isn't it an amazing thing if I can, can, can give back? I can't write a $10,000 check, but I can print enough books to donate the proceeds to give back to some of these organizations who are supporting at-risk youth. And I love that. And that's what I love teaching other authors to do because we have, we have a resource and all it takes is the generosity of spirit to say, yes, I want to make a difference in a child's life, just one. And in doing that, the ripple effect is, is profound. There's no, there are no words for. How many books yeah. have you given away so far? Um, I, I don't know, but I know we've raised over 800,000 for children's charities. Wow. That's a lot of books. <laughs> That's a lot of books. It's a small book and it's a powerful book. And it is obviously something that came with a much larger mission. And in every step of the way, it's very clear that you were guided and you listen <laughs> and you move through it. And we're so grateful that you did. Thank you. Yeah. It's been a lot of fun. I, um, I've met families and children who have, you know, I'll tell you one really quick story and then, and then I'll let everybody go. I went into the Watts Learning Center early on, just after my book had come out. Um, 
it was published in December 2010. And in February two, uh, 2011, I still had very low sales. I didn't really understand that getting it out, I didn't understand the book business of getting it out there and partnering with other people and really learning to use the art of collaboration. I really was not clear. I also wasn't confident in myself to say, look what I did, you know, cause I really didn't do it. I just felt so inauthentic. Um, but I went to the Watts Learning Center and I thought, okay, maybe this is why, maybe this is why this whole thing happened for me because I really loved being at the Watts Learning Center. I'll send you a picture of that. Remind me. 46% um, of those children are, are in foster care. So, um, and that's not talking of the ones who, speaking of the ones who live with their grandparents or aunts or uncles or in group home care with just 46% of them were in foster care, usually due to one or both parents being incarcerated. So I talk about how I was in foster care with the children. I read the book and I talk about my own story. And afterward, this little boy came up and, and handed me this dollar bill that was you know, folded with, you know, lint and hairs and things stuck to it. He hand is, hands me this dollar. He says, um, this dollar is all I got. And I want to give you all I got to give. Six years old. So I couldn't take his dollar. I mean, I just couldn't take this, this dollar because I just, I mean, he's a six-year-old little boy. His dollar's all he's got, but I'm giving out the books and I'm signing them to him. His name was Gregory. And I have a picture of Gregory and I, and I'm telling you the boy was a messenger. That he, What he said to me that day was, you brought me something I would give everything I, I think is important for. And that's the message of love and encouragement and that it does not always going to look the way that it does right now. And that I need to remember that the kindness and the love and the people who don't leave me behind, they, this is what love is. It's not the hard, the harsh, the judgment, the labels, the, that's not what love is. So um, seeing the effect I had on his little spirit and feeling the effect that his spirit had on mine was everything I needed there in the beginning to reawaken and inspire myself and hear God's message that there is, there is work to be done. You can't write the $10,000 check, but you can certainly partner with, with um, Jack in the Box and Clairol and all kinds of amazing people who want just as much for, as you do to see our youth do well and to protect the, our most vulnerable population and to remind the world of how important love is. Um, and they've got the money, they've got the resources, they've got the reach. So this collaboration thing, um, in business and in our personal lives, I can't speak enough for, we are not meant to do all of this by ourselves. You know, we're just not meant to, we're meant to do it together. And I'm, the gifts that have come from that have been immeasurable. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for sharing that. And as I started is as we'll finish, you may have written the book for children, but in fact, it is the adults who get the learning and it's the adults who get to go in and make a difference. And I know that our viewers are going to hear your story and they're going to be inspired to take action, especially in this season of love. So El Febo, thank you so much for coming to share with us. Thank you. We will be back.